Is everyone having a good time tonight? Yeah! Let's see what we can do about that. Here's our new song! Hey everyone, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. Right, don't be put off by the title. <laughs> or the intro. <laughs> <laughs> it could it could be quite fun today. It could be. We'll see yeah. how we go. See yeah. how we go. Yeah. Uh, we have done a show on tuners before, so we're going to touch on that a bit today. But today is more about the idea of being in tune when you play. Good We've seen me. a couple of examples recently uh, that made me want to touch on this. Um, but first of all, some housekeeping. Um, first of all, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. If you have already subscribed, uh, create a, a new, new identity account, and then subscribe again. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, also, a massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grab some merchandise, t-shirts and hats and strings and pedals and yeah. Accoutrement. Accoutrement. As you say, yes. Uh, and also that pedalshop.com in the US. If you're in the US, you want to buy some pedals, hit up that pedalshop.com and you can find all kinds of lovely things there and some great information too. Even if you don't want to buy pedals, just go and have a look at it because it looks seriously bad. It does look good. It, it looks look great. Good. It looks great. Okay, let's jump in. So we're going to do this in a few parts today. I first of all wanted to discuss the idea of a guitar being in tune because it's quite tricky. We've got, um, you know, the idea of how the guitar came to be and, and the frets where they are and everything. It's, it gets really complicated. The, uh, long story short, we have an octave, right? If you grab a string and you make it vibrate and then you put it in half, you get an octave. Now, Within that octave, we have organized it in 12 semitones or 12 half tones. Okay. The guitar uses what we call 12 tone. The guitar uses what we call 12 tone equal temperament or 12 tet. And that's where we take that octave and we divide it into 12 exact segments. Yep. Presumably this has some sort of roots in the Western way of dividing up notes into how we come to understand them. Yeah. It started with uh, in Greece. Right. Like, and like a lot of things. Like a lot of things. And so great. They started so great. <laughs> they, they, um, they used to play with a thing called... Uh, a tetrachord, which is the first four notes of a major scale. And they'd write melodies and things. And that was a, uh, the intervals were a tone, a tone, and a semitone. We call that a tetrachord. Then what they did was they added another tetrachord on top of that. A tone away from the end of the first tetrachord, and you get... The major scale, and we call wow. the and we call that the Ionian mode. Yes, and if you don't know about that, watch the Sound of Music. Indeed, indeed, <laughs> indeed. So that's how that came to be, and within that, if you start uh, start the major scale on a different note and go to the end, you get all your um, within the major scale. You get all your semitones and tones, all the all the sharps and flats, all in there. I should say. Shafts and flats isn't correct, depending on what note you start off. But anyway, that's how we get the major scale. And yeah. within the major scale, we get the the divisions of tones, which is two frets and semitones, which is one fret. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it was um, at some point we landed on A440 for concert tuning. Now that you you would have heard that term before, A440. It means that the the string is vibrating at four, 440 times per second, right? So when you hear 440 hertz, or some people like to tune to 337 or 442, that's how many times the string is vibrating per second, right? Where is A440 on the guitar? Right here. All the way up there. All the way up there. 
And uh, as I learned yesterday, when you go to an orchestra performance and they're tuning up, what is the instrument that plays that note, Dan? It's the oboe. And do they always play the A out of interest? They always... Uh, is it the, o, the A or the C? So, it, it might be the C, I'm not sure. But the reason it's the oboe is because the oboe is made to be in A440. The only thing that you can retune on the oboe is the reed. The reed. And you say so you can tune it a little bit, but generally, yeah. an oboe is made for A440. So they play a note here and everyone tunes to the note from the oboe. That's basically where we are, right? We're up yeah. to date. We've, and so we've got our semitones and we've created this instrument with six strings on it and the whole instrument is divided into semitones, okay? Which are uh, that octave divided perfectly into 12. Here's the problem. We have uh, this thing's called harmonics, right? Which is, it's in nature. Everything basically has a harmonic. Everything vibrates at a certain frequency as do the strings on a guitar. So if I take my open E string, right? That's E. If I, if I divide that in half and I put my finger and I just gently hit that, we get an octave. We've divided that in half, we get an octave. So far, we're all good because that octave matches perfectly with that fret. Almost perfectly, if the intonation was bang on. We'll talk about intonation in a bit. Yeah, yeah. So, so far, we're good. If I tune this high E to be in tune with the low E, um, now I can divide the string again by another half which gives me the next octave, okay? Now, let's tune my high E to that octave. And you can hear it beat when it's out and then basically come bang on into tune. Yeah. So now those strings are in tune. If I play notes on the, like in the same fret. In tune. Now talking about harmonics. What, so when I started dividing the string into bits, we heard these different notes. So for example, if I divide the string into half or into quarters or into eighths or into sixteenths, we get octaves, right? We call these integers. So if I divide it into two, we get an octave. If I divide it into three, so if I take the string and divide it into thirds, so here's our E, into thirds, we get a fifth. We get the, the fifth note in the scale. Why? Because it's the well, it's the nature of the harmonic. If I, um, it just is. It just is. Cool. Uh, that's the answer I was looking for. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I, I've got to, I've can divide it into three here, or I can divide it into three here. Same note. I never knew that. Right. Same note. Because yeah, yeah. I'm dividing it into three. At this point, why um, you, we, we started off talking about fretted notes, yep. but we were only dealing with harmonics at this point. If you don't understand that, that is um, the fretted note is when you push the string down and you touch the fretboard, or exactly. you touch the top of the fret. The exactly. harmonic is when you just touch the string above the fret. Exactly. Exactly. So by using the harmonic, we're letting both sides of the string vibrate. Yeah. By using the fret, we're cutting it off at that point. We're only vibrating from this side down. Okay. okay. So if I divide it into three, I get the fifth. If I divide it into six, I get the fifth an octave higher. If I divide it into 12, I get the next octave up. Yep. Right? If I do, so we've done one, two, three. Uh, four would be the next octave. If I divide it into five, we get the major third. 
So, na, na, na. There's a major third. Yeah. Here's the problem. Our E, tune, our e strings are in tune, right? But if I play the major third and the harmonic, and then I play the major third on the high E string, Oof. right, harsh. Yeah. Okay. That fretted note is sharp. It's sharp by about fourteen cents. And when I say cents, we take our semitone, we divide it into one hundred points. Each of those points is a cent. Yep. Okay. okay. So. So it's fourteen percent out. Ex it's fourteen percent exactly. It's fourteen yeah. percent out. So for me to put that in tune, I need to go lower. Right. There's our major third. Sounds great. Only problem is. <laughs> now the E string is out of tune. <laughs> is at this point, um, you might be tempted to say, well, if your guitar was built and intonated properly, that wouldn't happen. And that's just not the case, it's is it? It's not the case. So, look, for example, I've tuned that, I've tuned that now to be harmonically in tune. Yeah. Okay. And as long as I'm playing a major third there in E, I'm yeah. fine. But if that then becomes the tonic, if that then becomes the root note, so the G sharp then becomes the root note, and I play um, uh, the, the major third, uh, in G sharp, which would be <laughs> the the root. The major third in G sharp is actually B sharp, which is for intents and purposes C. But we're being specific and clinical. It's B sharp, right? So here we go. All I want to know is how to play a G in tune, mate. <laughs> so here's our here's our in tune major third in E. But now if I take that note and I play an in tune, use that as a tonic and play an in tune third from that. So, it's it's a problem that on the guitar, everything is a compromise. Yeah, that's the point, isn't it? Yep, everything is a compromise. So, we've touched on that. You basically a quick understanding on why, um, if we look at hum, you know, harmonically, the guitar, we're, we're compromising. The idea behind um, a true, uh, the 12 even temperament tuning, the 12 tet tuning, is that it's the best compromise yeah. all over the neck. Yeah, and if, if that all seems like it's going over your head, it's the reason why when you play a D chord and a C chord and a G chord, only one of them's in tune. Exactly. And we sit here for ages before we start a show, trying to get the thing in tune, and we get to a point where we can live with it. Yeah. And it's only ever we can live with that. Yeah. All right? Okay. There's the theory. Out the road. Had to be done. We, we might have even shown some, some graphics and some diagrams. <laughs> what I want to do now is talk about um, just using a tuner. Yeah, how, I think how to tune your guitar, isn't it? How to tune your guitar. Because when you have your first guitar lesson and they teach you how to tune the guitar, they teach you one way. We'll show you a couple of other ways which you might already know. Indeed. And then talk about tuners, maybe. Indeed. Um, okay. How do you tune your guitar? I've, okay. I always tune my guitar with a fretted note, right? The reason being is that if I'm uh, if I'm fretting an F, for example, or an F sus, I know that the intervals there will be the same there and there, and I'm applying the same amount of pressure. So I will turn a tuner on. Let's just turn one on for the time being, because we'll get back to this in a second. So I will fret the note, and that tells me I'm sharp. So that's in tune. Here's the problem that I find, and something to be aware of 
with your guitars. If I fret the note and then I play the open string, quite often the fretted notes in tune, the open strings can be a bit out. Yeah. Right. Um, so actually, this is good because Johnny's done this one. Yeah. Um, but sometimes when you, you know, if you bought a new guitar um, and you want to get a new nut in, make sure that when the nut goes in, yeah, that it's done so that the fretted note and the open string are the same. And what Dan's talking about here is that if you, so back, rewind just for a second. When you when you learn to play the guitar, they usually teach you to fret the fifth uh, fret on one string and play the next one down for most of them. So you basically go. You do that all the way down the neck, except you do the fourth fret on the G string. Mm -hmm. And that's how you go on. And then you, what you find then is you tune your guitar all up like that. You go to play a, a D chord or a G chord and it's out of tune. And that is because of what he's just talking about. What happens is when you fret a note, you're not talking about a perfect harmonic or a perfect division of the string. Yeah. You've got, especially if you've got big frets like on this guitar. So I'm going to play um, a note here at the first fret and just listen to the variance. <laughs> Exactly that. Almost a semitone. And in fact, the, one of the tuners there was was referencing an F sharp. Right. So the amount you push the string down by is going to affect how in tune you are when you play. And we'll come to that in a sec. And that is one of the, one of the many reasons why you adjust the guitar for in, intonation to get the thing playing in tune. But as he's just said, it is literally always a compromise. Yeah no matter whether you're talking about perfect tempered, um, crazy shaped fret guitars. Well, again, we might talk about that in a bit. No matter what you do, BuzzFeed and tuning system down at the nut there, all those things are just a different form of compromise. Exactly that. What actually happens is, and hopefully we'll demonstrate this as we go along, what, what, ha what will happen is the more you play a guitar and the more you play the guitar, the more you learn your own intonation for things that you play yeah so your perf your guitar comes back perfectly set up from the person setting it up for you it's perfectly intonated it's perfectly in tune everything about it is perfect you hit a g chord and it's like that's like the seller intro yeah 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 <laughs> so what did we say we said when you go to learn to uh, tune your guitar for the first time and teach you that fifth fret me method. The next thing you normally get taught is the fifth and the seventh fret harmonics. Yep. yep. So we talked about harmonics before. Here's when you fret the fifth uh, fret, it sounds like this. And when you play, play the fifth fret harmonic, it sounds like this. So you play the fifth fret harmonic on the, let's say the low E string, you play the seventh fret harmonic on the A string and that gives you harmon two harmonics that are the same. Why? It's, it's exactly, because the, uh, the strings are, uh, in this case, they're a perfect fourth apart. When you divide the strings uh, harmonically, the tonic here will be the same as the, uh, when you play the, the on the seventh fret here, basically they match up. Yeah. Those harmonics just match up. So we get this. And what this enables you to do is really listen to the oscillation in the harmonics when you tune, right? That's the second way you learn how to tune. Yep. And then the third way you learn how to tune when you watch James Taylor's video is you tune a harmonic to a fretted note, which is what partly what you were just talking about. Yes. James Taylor, the famous acoustic guitarist, singer, songwriter, great video. And for example, this is how I tune my guitar. Harmonic at the 12th fret mm -hmm. and then fret the corresponding note on the third string. So uh, on the fourth string. You've then got a bit of a dance how you get the A string in tune so you can then do
And then when you go through all of that and you get to the end, it happens to us all the time on filming days, you play a D. And some of that's in tune. <laughs> some of that's in tune. And the reason the D isn't in tune, you've got that major third right at the top, and it just sticks out like a thumb that's very sore. <laughs> so, and but we've learnt ways around it, right? So lots of times, instead of playing an E like this, we won't play that third. Or we'll just mute it with the first finger. Incidentally, if you play with overdrive, we'll talk about this in a minute. If you play with overdrive, that is a perfect way to play E major. Don't worry about the major bit. Yep. Just play it, just mute the major third. If you play it like I play it, so, you know, that sort of shape. Um, just lift this finger off a bit so you mute the string, and that gives you... Exactly that. You'll hear rock players doing that all the time. It's also... Because, sorry, just to finish that. You're if, right. you, if you put that major third in, that's just what he just did. And yet the minor third's in tune. So it's another reason why one of the first chords you learn is G major like this. And the second chord you learn is G major like this. But just to demonstrate that. If you weren't following, Dan was playing an open shape G uh, with the notes which would be the root. You've got a major third there yes. on, the, on the second string. Uh, fifth. Fifth. Yep. Tonic. Tonic. Major third. Major third again. So you've got two major thirds, right? And the tonic again. If you put in... What's that? What note's that in the scale? The D. This, so that's another fifth. That's a fifth. Yep. So you, you substitute the major third for a fifth, you get that version of G, which we all which play is what in, we all use. in rock and roll, like, right? You hear that first G, you go, no, nah, that's not going to work. So here it is with with the B string playing the major third. And here it is with the B string playing the fifth. Great, great. I've just demonstrated something that I do all the time. <laughs> Bend the neck to put the guitar in tune. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all, again, we're just demonstrating that it is a compromise, but within that compromise, you find ways to make it work. Yeah. It means you need to listen and, you know, be sensitive to that stuff. But as you progress along, you will just find more and more ways to make it work. The, the next challenging part is that it's different on different guitars. You know, so, you know, Mick gravitates towards strats, I gravitate towards Telecasters because I've spent more time finding ways to make it work on this guitar. Um, but, you know, regardless of that... Fret size, action height, all those things. All we, those things. We're going to do a little bit on guitars. Why don't we cut that in here? Oh. Okay, here we are. And we're going to have a look at some, shall I say, points of vulnerability on the guitar. Just a few things that will give you the best chance to keep the thing in tune. What a nice guitar that is, Daniel. Oh, Stonking. Goodness me, looks good in wide angle too. <laughs> I mean, what are we going to say about that? Lovely strap. Beautiful. Oh. Okay, first thing to make you aware of, if you've got rusty strings or dead strings on the guitar, there is no way it's going to stay in tune. I definitely find, I, I'm a big fan of new strings. I know there's lots of players who are not fans of new strings. Yes. Brian May apparently is famously hates new strings. Right. That's I, so interesting. I definitely find that a lovely fresh set of strings with, you know, the requisite 20 minutes playing on them just to stretch them all in properly and have them all sat 
I can tune that. Mm. And then when they go past a certain point for me, I don't know why it is the case. I find keeping the guitar in tune right. much harder. Sure. Literally no idea why that is. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's just one of those things. If, this, if the strings are good, um, you, get, you stand a much better chance. But if they're, if they're dead or whatever, there's just no way. So first thing is to make sure that the strings are okay. Mm. Now, if we start from this end, there's a bunch of different ways that you can connect the string to the uh, tuner. Capstan. The capstan, if you will. The capstan's lick. There's, there's, and there's a bunch of different uh, like your locking tuners and that sort of stuff. In all honesty, as long as you've got enough winds on the capstan, it does two things. It makes the string grip and it also puts the correct angle uh, between the nut and this, the string. If, if the angle isn't correct, you're not going to get enough tension on here. There are people, as you say, mm -hmm. in fact, in, in Dan's recent vlog with uh, Matt Gleason of Monty's, Matt does a little tie. Yeah. And I know lots of guitar repairers who do the tie. I don't. I find on these, it's pretty much the best locking tuner that was ever invented because the string goes down in. Yeah. You then make sure that each successive wind goes underneath the last. Yep. And that, I usually put a couple of winds on these fat ones, mm -hmm. three or four on these ones, and five or six on these ones. And secondly, a, a great tip for tuning is always tune up to the note. Yeah. And if you go past, go back down below and back up again, because what happens is you basically load the tuner. Right. It's much more likely to slip back of course. If it's not under tension. Now, yep. some tuners are better than others. Some tuners not as susceptible to that as others. But I found that to be a great, yeah, a great thing to do. Always tune up to the note, not down. Yep. So, in other words, if you're tuning and you're and you've tuned sharp, don't just tune down the note. Right, go beneath the note and then come back up. Back up. Right. That works. That works great. We have the nut. We've also got string trees. String trees in some cases. Yep. Um, some guitars don't have these. Some Fenders have two. Uh, and they are a potential source of friction. So what we're going to be going through here is any single touch point on the guitar that could be a point of friction, we're going to encourage you to make it less so. Yeah. And we don't have to, it's not rocket science keeping these things, uh, shall we say, lubricated. There's a bunch of different products that you can get, things like... Um, nut sauce. Nut sauce is great. But old school, pencil. Uh, pencil has got a graphite um, core, and the easiest thing to do, get the string out from underneath there, and just get a little bit in there, a little bit in there, and even just put a bit on the string itself. There we go. And all you're doing there is, as the string passes through the string tree, you're giving it the best possible chance to do so unimpeded. Because as you start to put pressure on, bending strings, changing the relative tension fore and aft, mm -hmm. it has the potential to snag on it. So if you can lubricate it, that potential is reduced. The guitar's much more likely to stay in tune. Yep. As we go galloping towards the nut. Indeed. Crucial. The nut is is so important. There's a couple of couple of things. Even if you're playing a Telecaster, you still need to be aware that it's really important to keep uh, the string moving freely through the nut. As you change tension on the string, if you as I as I increase tension on this side of the fret uh, of, of the nut, it's going to pull the string through this end. As I release, the string is going to pull back over this side of the nut. So super important to keep the nut flowing smoothly. Again, nut sauce, bit of pencil, just in there, bit on the string, and it literally is that simple. I've always done this. I've always just run a piece of pencil across the slots. Sometimes the top of the nut can go a bit gray, but yeah, you know, that's all right. And it really, really, really does make a massive difference. Yep. I mean, I guess what we haven't said is make sure your nut's cut properly in the Well, this is the place. other thing. This is the other thing. If the nut is too high, um, anyone that's watched the, the Monty's video, or indeed the video um, that we did 
uh, when Mick and I had our guitars refretted with Johnny Kincaid, and he'll fret is it the G string or the G sharp, and then just pressing down here on the first fret, and just having a little bit of clearance. So the issue is, if the fret is too high, then you have to put too much pressure on the string to fret it against the F, and that will pull it sharp. So making sure that the nut is cut correctly will help you, because let's be honest, most of us play down in this area, certainly for the rhythm stuff. If the nut isn't cut correctly, being in tune down here gets a lot more difficult. So there we go. There we've, we go. We've wound our strings on properly. We've lubricated our string trees. We've made sure our nut is properly cut and lubricated. And Indeed. it's a good um, habit to get into to do that every string change. Yep. Okay. The string's connecting down this end. Now on the Strat, we've got these individual um, saddle pieces that we can adjust the intonation on. And doing it's Really simple. I'm going to grab the strobe tuner. While Dan's setting that up, I will just mention frets. Frets are crucial uh, of course. in how the guitar plays, intonates, because where their centers are determines where the note happens. So if your frets are really unevenly worn, if they flattened right off, it could be that that's going to cause you some playability issues and also some tuning issues. So making sure your frets are in tip-top condition is all part of being in tune. Yeah. Intonation is the last thing you do. The last thing we do. After truss rod, after action. Yeah. We do. I think we need to do a rosy check because okay. you, you can probably hear in the background quite a lot of um, noise from the spaniel. Here's the spaniel <laughs> working on the bone. Aren't you, Rosie? Yeah. There you go. The easiest way to check your intonation is I'm going to, I always find it easiest tuning with the, on the bridge pickup for this. If I tune the open E. You should also do it in the playing position as well because the neck will be bent, but for the purposes of demonstration here, we've got it flat. Close enough for rock okay. and roll. Now, we've tuned the open string. I'm going to tune the harmonic. Just make sure that's tuned. The harmonic will be the same as the open string. Then I'm going to fret the 12th fret. And I want the 12th fret to be the same as the harmonic. So. So it so would be interesting. Let's see how different that is when in position when I go to the playing position. Okay. So bear in mind, with the guitar laid flat like this, um, it's there is just the smallest amount of weight there because the neck is supported here, the body supported there. So if I go to the playing position now, and we go, uh, if we have a look at the tuner, Dan, a little bit. So the fretted note is a bit sharp, but not enough that I'm going to adjust it. It's, the easy thing to remember is triple F, fret, flat, forward. If the fretted note is flat, move the saddle forward, fret, flat, forward. Very good. Okay. I like that. If you've got a guitar that will intonate every string. That's what you do. If you've got a Telecaster, you have to pick the best compromise between the two. If you've got a Gretsch, what do we do with that? Yeah, boy, oh boy. So you get the top and the bottom one in, in, because I think this one's actually pinned, so you can't move it. Right. But uh, on a lot of Gretsches, this won't be pinned. On a lot of Gretsches, this won't be <laughs> pinned. And um, you would have to move the low E to the right place, the high E to the right place, and then hope all the other ones in the middle. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Remember, it was, it's always a compromise. Yeah. Always a compromise. But that gives us our best chance. Oh, you know, but other things 
like making sure that the neck is tight you know <laughs> yeah basic basic guitar stuff yeah one thing I, i'll just add something on on strap bridges so we said earlier that any part of the guitar that can move wherever a string passes over something that can move that juncture needs to be lubricated yep so one of the great benefits of these bent steel saddles is the steel's really hard right so it's unusual for the strings to cut into that okay steel now if you use something like you know, like a cast material or even brass for that matter, you can, strings can cut grooves in and that can be a point of friction. Right. So just to be aware really. And then of course, the a final thing to say on the Strat, and this is Strat specific, in fact, well, it's any guitar that's got a vibrato, that also moves. Yeah. So that also needs to be able to move freely, which means whatever it pivots on, whether it's six screws here, or whether it's a dual fulcrum thing, that, those pivot points need to be free and clear and spring back to tension exactly where they want. Incidentally, those of you with Paul Reed Smith guitars, if you, you may know this already, but the bridge screws on a PRS are notched. So if you half screw one down, the notch that the bridge plate sits into won't be square on the notch. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> took me oh, that's amazing. Took me a long time to work that out. So yeah, <laughs> what are we saying? Every single point, that a string touches something, that position needs to be free to move and lubricated so that you don't get additional friction. So that once you do change the singing length of this string, yep. either by bending a string or just fretting a string, it doesn't pull it and then it can't return. General setup stuff, isn't it really? Yeah. Just to keep your guitar in tip top shape. So to give you the best chance of fulfilling your part of the bargain. Uh, is that about it? I think that's about it. Great. Yep. All of those things apply to whatever guitar you're using. Okay, back to the room. Indeed. Well, that was jolly interesting, Daniel. It's fascinating, yeah. fascinating. Um, so, we've had a look at the areas of the guitar to be aware of and to help you stay in tune. There are some other things that have come out um, in, in the technology world to help us stay in tune. Things like uh, there's uh, true temperament frets. Uh, Steve Vai's a big fan of these. Um, and we'll put a picture up now. And it's basically it's the frets with the squiggly lines. So the idea is that they've made the frets to match the harmonics. Again, it's a compromise, but lots of people love it. Yeah. Um, and there's some really interesting videos out there, you know, um, then, you know, so go and check that out for yourself. Something else has come along recently that I think is really interesting. <coughs> Check this out. So our mate Devin Townsend sent us this <laughs> to, to, to play. So this has been in a warehouse for a couple of years, was shipped down here and then pulled out of the case. <laughs> This uses a that system. is one loud guitar, is it's it active? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. crazy loud. Um, it's, man, feel, the he feel how heavy that is. Oh, yeah. Good 10 pounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, this uses a thing called the Evertune bridge system. It's, it's done in a way that you set the amount of tension that you want on the string, and whether the tune goes up or down, it stays at that tension. Yeah. You can still do things like bend and that sort of stuff. Yeah, you can you can set it so that bends are almost negate, uh, almost mitigated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's a really interesting, um, you know. So when I Dev first told me about that, he started using these, and he couldn't believe it because he's he plays heavy and loud, and his gigs are, I mean, yeah, are yeah. just you know brutal, and he's always struggled with keeping the guitar in, in tune on stage. And he also uses different tunings that can get like super low. Yeah. Uh, and he put this on, he's like, man, it's it's the first time I've been I saw in it, tune. I saw it when it came out at the NAMM show and Evertune had a stand there and they had a um, early 60s, or mm, early 60s, probably a 64 Pelham Blue 
um, which, which had gone green SG, which they'd fitted it to. Right. And at that time, you had to gouge out quite a bit of the guitar to to get it fitted to fit it. Yeah. And I've never ever played an SG that's been so in tune as that. Right. Yeah. Because it individually tensions tensions the strings, and as Dan says, you can you can tension them. Um, it's a mechanical intervention, isn't yeah. it? It's not a. So is that one not not got any gubbins in the back? Oh yeah, of course it has. Yeah, it's got gubbins there. It's got. Yeah. That's for the uh, active pickup stuff in there. But like you said, they're individually. You set them at the strings individually. It's it's not a, a like robotic tuners or anything like that. No, no, no. It's a manual. It's you a manual. Set it manually. Yeah, it's yeah. just a spring thing. So, it just stays in tune. It's 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 brilliant. Yeah, I guess if it was a few years ago, we would have been talking more about Gibson's robotic tuners. Um, developed by a company called Tronicle, which uh, was a mechanical way with little um, robot gear, or well, robot, little machine gears, mm -hmm. which would essentially marry a gear system to a guitar tuner. So it would know that that needed to be whatever it needed to be, and it would make the adjustment automatically. Yeah. And Gibson thought it was going to revolutionise the world, and... Everyone was like, nah, we're, we're good. Don't we're really good. want that on my guitar. It did. By the time they stopped using it, it kind of worked. Oh, okay. As I remember, yeah. Right. Um, and I think, you know, in theory, you say, what's the biggest problem new starters have mm. with playing the guitar, apart from where to put their fingers? It's getting the flipping thing in tune. And, you know, not only is it awful for parents, like when your kid learns to play violin, you know, sat there listening to out tune guitar all day. Yeah. What a great marketing story to be able to say, this guitar is in tune and it will always be in tune. Great. Rewind to that bit where we said, but actually what really matters is where you put your fingers and how hard you press. Yeah, That's totally. What... <laughs> so it's part of learning the guitar is learning to play in tune. Yeah. You know, there's no... There's no magic tuning system that's going to keep everything in tune for you. We, you know, we all play differently. It's about understanding uh, how much pressure and, and how to hit the string properly and all that sort of stuff, it all makes a big difference. So play that then. I want to know if you can play it. sound you don't hear on uh, that pedal show every day. I was really drop D. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you wanted to retune it now, you wouldn't be able to. No, exactly. You have to. You'd have to adjust the. Do all of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so okay. So I'm interested wow. to know.
apologies for the struggles. It, um, a, the fingerboard is flatter than a witch's hat. <laughs> a, 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 a witch that wears a flat hat. Um, As opposed to a comical. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> With apologies to witches who have been long persecuted <laughs> down the annals of history. Um, uh, I was just seeing if you could do string on string bends. Yeah. Because the thought is, given that there's a tension going on, um, that it would operate a bit like a floating vibrato, but it doesn't mm. do that. It, it individually keeps each string in tune. So one would assume if you broke a string, mm -hmm. all the others would be fine. Absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah, man, that's really cool. It's really cool. I'm really impressed with that. Thanks so much. Good night. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't think it gets any cooler than that, does no, it? it really Did you doesn't. know that happened? No, I didn't. I didn't. Get in. <laughs> Party time. Goodbye. <laughs> Party's over. It's really impressive. It's really, really impressive. Um, and exactly as you say, you could see why. Because in the, you know, if you play in a very sensitive sort of uh, beat combo. Yes. Sorry, did you want to leave that plugged in? No, 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 no. If you play in a very sensitive beat combo and, and all your fellow band members are sympathetic to one another and you have a very sonorous, sonorous experience, it's easy to hear when something's out of tune and you can tweak it or you can step on your tuner or you can do whatever you do. Yeah. That becomes much harder in the environment that he's in. Oh, yeah. Like cacophonous. Yeah. What do we, what do we say? Progressive music. Yeah, heavy progressive yeah, and it, I guess when you're playing a drop C power chord with that much distortion, it's quite hard to hear if you're in tune or not. It is. So knowing the guitar is is doing it for you. Happy days. Yeah, totally. Okay, we have a quick look at tuners. We've got five tuners that we've used on the show in various... <laughs> Uh, points. This this part of the show is for everyone. When Dan and I play a chord that's out of tune on the show, we'll pick up a guitar and it's slightly uh, malharmonious. And some smart ass always writes, hey man, put a tuner on your bird. And my brain wants to explode because it's like, that won't help. Yeah. Here's why it won't help. Okay, you ready? <laughs> Five tuners. One's flat, <laughs> one's sharp. If, if poking your eyes out with a spoon seems like more fun at this point, bear with us. So the reason we've got these five tuners, that's my TU2 yep. that I gigged four years. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind, the TU2 has long been superseded. TU3. Yeah. Yep. We've got, for those of you who don't know a lot about tuners, watch the first tuner video we did, but we've got the, the TU2 there employs what a lot of the first pedal tuners did, which is a series of LEDs left and right. Mm -hmm. And as you look down on it from the top, left is flat, right is sharp. You can calibrate it. We started off by saying that we've sort of landed on A440 as concert pitch tuning in Western, most Western music. Although I do think that in some countries they tune, they go to different, um, that it'll be different for orchestras. I think so. I mean, you know, we're not talking about microtonal 
tunings. And there's a whole, yeah, honestly, you can, people have done PhDs on tuning. It's a good read, actually. And if you, if you, if you want to play any flat or you want to play in 432, which is a whole other interesting subject, um, you can you can configure most modern tuners to do that so yeah. that you know you're in tune. What I'm interested in is the degree of so say accuracy. Okay. So if we take um let's take the Strober Stomp yep. and the TU2. Okay. What you've got in the Strober Stomp is a strobe. Strobe tuner, yeah. Same as this. Yep. So instead of a series of LEDs that go left and right, you've got a thing that goes round and round. And strobe tuners are long considered to be the most accurate. And Peterson was the, the, ga the main game in town. So if you go to a good tech, they'll usually have a really high-end Peterson strobe tuner, which is super crazy accurate. Mm -hmm. I want to know how much variance there is between it saying it's in tune on the TU2 right. and an accurate reading from either of the strobes. Okay. So how far can you go on here before that before says you're that out of tune. Says you're out of tune. Okay, no problem. The the good news is they're all on. Yes. Yeah. So, so we can we can look at all of them. Okay. So the TU two. And the Daddario are saying we're in tune. The other three are saying we're still flat. Do that again. Just play the note again. That's not bad. That's I was expecting more variance well, than yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It's I would say um, that the the strobes uh, the strobo tuners are so accurate, but then there's a a little bit of variance either way with the other lot. Yeah. But in the heat of battle, you know, where it's going to be difficult to in the, between songs to look down at the strobos and get everything. Yeah, but I think that leads us quite neatly to the discussion about sweetened and and, and tuned tunings. Yeah, yeah. Because, if I remember rightly, I would I would know that if I was tuning my B string, I think it was, I would know to stop the second it went from flat to green. Right. Okay. And if 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 it, if I then gave it the extra little tweak that kept it green, it would be sharp. Okay. For my personal intonation playing right and that is a bit like playing the tuner <laughs> i think that might be one of the benefits of a strobe tuner mm. once you learn it sure so that you know that just that much flat right With, yeah yeah is where it needs to be sure and of course where that leads to is i um so peterson among other people down the years have discovered that if you sweeten the tuning what does that mean? It means we're changing, instead of it being uh, bang on, we're moving certain notes, certain strings either side, yeah. and it helps in some situations. And this is how any sweet and tuning system works, whether it's moving your frets, making them you know, squiggly yeah, yeah. shapes, whether it's the buzz feet and nut, and I think they do something at the saddle, but if they did something at the nut, you could buy replacement nuts. Right. What you're doing there essentially is sweetening the tuning. Yeah. What Peterson and I guess others now have done is they put the sweetened tuning in the machine itself. So if Dan just plays again, you'll see something come up on the screen here that says uh, EQ. That's the mode. That's the equal, uh, equal basically temperament. Yeah. yeah, equal temperament tuning is a standard, accurate chromatic tuner. But then what you can do is select from one of goodness knows how many sweetened tunings right. to suit all kinds of instruments. 
James Taylor's got his own sweet and tuning system. Exactly that. Mm. So I, I don't know if we need to go into that in any no, depth, other actually, than to know not only can you select presets, you can make your own. Yeah, yeah, it's very so cool. So if you know you're on your on that particular guitar, your B string always needs to be eight cents sharp. Mm -hmm. Probably flat, but anyway, you it, can program it into the tuner. Indeed, and there's a there's a really fantastic video with James Taylor himself showing how he does the his tuning system. It's really yeah. cool. Okay, we've got one more thing to do. And this is about playing in tune. Um, and just a couple of things to help you when you're, you know, in the heat of battle, things just to be aware of. We went and saw uh, Mick play the gig the other night um, with uh, his mate Nev um, at a, his album launch. Mm. Album celebration, you might say. Indeed. Owner of this here gold top. For now. <laughs> Yep. And what was really impressive was one of the songs um, that Nev played at the end, and uh, it might be the last track on the album. It is. It's called And Finally. And Finally. And there's some bending notes in the melody, and it was really impressive. This is, this is really hard to do, but it's a fantastic exercise uh, to, to learn to play in tune. Chris Buck is the man for this as well, isn't he? He is the man. One of the things about Chris Buck, and it goes into the, to, you know, what Nev was doing. Um, this, when you listen to Chris Buck play and he bends notes, and he bends notes all over the place, and they are always bang on bang in on tune. tune. Yeah. One, of the, one of the things that you hear with guys who haven't quite nailed that yet is... It's not, it's not a crime against nature to bend a bit flat, but it can be really uh, harsh when you bend sharp. You often hear a lot of flat bends in, in rock music. Uh, listen to uh, Living on a Prayer when Tommy's got his six string and hook and uh, he's holding down when he used you to make, make it, it talk, talk so, so tough. tough. That's a pretty flat bend, uh, but it sounds great because we're totally used to hearing it. Right. In... In um, in rock music, so if I'm playing an A here, it's a little bit flat, right? Right. Because what's the note we're aiming for there? Probably it's probably a tone up. The e, yeah. Now it can be cool to bend a bit flat. And discover the the fun to be had between the flat and the bang on the note. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can bend to whatever note you want, but knowing how to do it is the point. Now bend a bit sharp for me. Okay. So then rem remember our target note is this note here. Little trick, little trick. If you can't quite bend to it, vibrato on the end. This is a and great cover since. Now I'm going to bend a bit sharp, okay? It's really unpleasant compared to the flat note. Yeah. Let's just do that again. It's... It's pretty horrible. Yeah. And I, I guess the lesson is if, if you're going for a bend, then practice bending to the note. Absolutely. And a couple of ways to do that. Um, you talk, we're talking about learning the tension of your instrument and where those notes are. That's better. Good man. That's better. I was wondering why it sounded a bit weedy, Dan. Let's have a go on. Uh... What the worst thing though is if I put a bunch of delay on oh. and you and you 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 bend that note.
Because once you've got the lay on, you've got to live with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're done. <laughs> boy, oh boy. So um, a couple of really easy things to help you do that. As, as Mick was saying, work out the note you're bending to, okay? So if I'm, if I'm wanting to get that in there, find the note. And just check yourself, you know. Also, especially for pre-bends. Uh, pre-bends are really hard. There's a there's a road in London called Pre-Bend Road, by the way. Is, is yeah, there? Yeah. It's not just bends, it's any note you play. It, that's the other thing, right? It's, <laughs> you know, bends are a big, bends are a big part of it because that's when it's, you, you can really hear it, but fretting the note, you know, so one thing that Mick's always had, which has been, been a real learning thing for me, is just the amount of pressure and the way he attacks the note, and it always sounds big. And there's a lot in that, just the way that you attack the note. And some people, um, if if you're if you've got too much tension, yeah, you know, I love listening to Eric Johnson talk about guitar playing, and he's so relaxed when he plays. He drops picks all the time yeah, because right. he's so relaxed. Yeah, and it's about just getting the enough tension on there. It's not about if you're like this and really tense, you're going to have a hell of a time trying to play in tune. Yeah, and of course that all intensifies if you're in any sort of pressure situation like playing a gig. I did it at the, at the last gig. I First bend I played, I overbent. Did you? And I was like, wow, it's like I'm 12 years old again, you know? Fantastic. But so, it, it, you know, we're all, we're all susceptible to, to, to adding that tension to our playing. But I think the point is, you might spend ages going, oh, I need to buy this tuner or maybe that tuner is better than that tuner or this tuner is better than that tuner. You're probably better off just using the tuner you have as much as possible and really learning where it works with you. I've often said on the show, I hate all guitar tuners. <laughs> it's not quite true, but I do struggle because yeah. it takes me a while to learn the tuner to where it's going to help the guitar be in tune for the way I play, yeah. which is going to be different from the way you play and the different from the way you play the way it might be that you've grown up playing a certain guitar that's got dodgy intonation or at least has suboptimal intonation Yeah. because it's never perfect. Remember, we always said it's compromise. And actually what you've learned to do in your technique is iron that out. Yeah. Yeah. And to take that a step further, I actually think that's a big part of what makes guitar players sound like them. Yeah. Is right. exactly how they intonate. Right, that's really interesting. Because a few cents here and there. Man. It's a big difference. It's a massive difference. Yeah, totally. So that this idea that, you know, a perfectly made, perfectly set up guitar that's perfectly in tune with a great tuner is going to play in tune for you is cobblers. Yeah. Isn't it? Because totally. I, I, I don't know about you, but if I play a telly, I've always got a monkey around a little bit with the G and the B strings, especially, so if I'm hammering away like in, let's get a telly done. Yeah, so you hear, you, you, this is the problem. You pull your guitar out your case and you get this. So let's do the diligent thing. Plug in any one of our five tuners. Mm -hmm. I'll always tune to 12th fret harmonic. Which one I'm looking at. So I'm looking at the pizza in there. Yep. It, the top E sounds sharp to me. Okay. And the but B... according to the tuner, yeah. it's in tune. So where are we? Pretty good. G's good. So if I'm if I'm playing my tally whacking, I'll probably be playing some, you know, G C and D thing. Yep.
and for the first time in history, I've recorded. <laughs> Played a telly tune. Played a tune the guitar and it and it, it's in tune in all those positions. It is in tune because you're playing it in tune. Acid test. Okay. <laughs> Are you doing I'm that not, on purpose? No, I'm not. I'm not playing. I'm not doing that on purpose. These are thinner strings that I'm used. To. So Let's just you're, edit you're, that part of the video and make that the whole video. You're gripping a bit harder. I'm obviously. gripping a bit harder because. To, for me to fret this guitar, yeah. I've got to put that amount of pressure on there. Interesting. So <laughs> for me to adjust to playing that guitar in tune, I've got to change the way I play. Yeah. So that's fascinating. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> that's really fascinating. <laughs> And I guess what I was going to say was then if 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 that was that tune, the next tune might be A. Yeah. G's just starting to creep there. Right. And normally what will happen is I'll be I'll be hammering away and it'll be like just pull that top E down sure. a tiny bit and then by about five songs later, the guitar's probably a bit out as far as the tune is concerned. Right. But it's, it's in. It's in with you. It's in for me. Yeah. I found that when I when I got the new strap, the gold strap, for the first three weeks, I couldn't play it in tune. Wow. And then it was like, oh, there it, it is. Clicked. And I wonder how much of that, but bearing in mind we were talking about pressure yeah. on the fretboard and all of that, it's got 6,100 jumbo frets. All right. So I'm used to pushing down at a different tension yeah remember what we did at the start there where we got an almost almost a semitone out of one fret yeah. that, that, there you go fascinating really fascinating so what 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 can you do then a you can get a tuner that you that you bond with yeah b you can do all those things to your guitar that give you the best chance yes yeah and C, learn to live with it. Just sit with it. You know, sit with it. And if even if that means sitting with a, if you don't trust your ears, sit with a tuner. Mm. And just, you know, one thing that can be really helpful is record yourself playing something, so you can listen back. Ouch. You know, because that's <laughs> it's hard, right? Yeah, yeah. But as you, what you'll find is as you. Um, develop as a player and as you as spend time with the guitar and you learn the specificities of that particular instrument then things will start to fall into place. I do wonder if that's why so many of the world's great players tend to stay on one instrument for a considerable amount of time before switching. Yeah. I mean you've got a spare guitar or it might be used different guitar for different songs or whatever but think about a lot of the greats they were they were on one guitar yeah for a while and really getting to know it intimately. Yeah, yeah. I think there's, there's, there's definitely something in there. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Probably one of the drier episodes we've ever done. But as everything has its equal and exact opposite, one of the most boring things in guitar tone is perhaps the most important. Totally. Because I, I, nobody, I totally wants, you, think nobody so. wants you to play out of tune. No. No, I absolutely think so. And it's... It's an important thing just to be aware of, you know, there's so much more than getting one of those things on your board. Yeah. That, and and that making the light go in the right exactly. place. Exactly. It just does not mean you're going to be playing in tune. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pose a final question, Dan. Okay. Actually, it's more of an assertion than a... Than a okay. It's a hypothesis. Okay. Hypothesize me. Baby. Playing... Absolutely perfectly in tune. Yes. Sounds quite boring. Playing too far out of tune is unlistenable. Right. 
happy happy places somewhere in the middle where you are yeah, yeah, yeah where you where you make the noise that connects with people is that particular blend of intonation that is uniquely you i can curse sir do you think so i i love that it's a bit of a tough one isn't it, it yeah but it's you know if you think of the guitar if you think of tuning in terms of absolutes then we've got there are 12 notes and you know, because nothing makes any any more difference than the pickups, and everyone's just sound exactly the same, yeah. right? <laughs> but that's not that's not reality. Yeah, yeah. You know, I cannot make a strat sound the way that you make a strat sound, as much as attack of the note and everything, but the way that you intonate. I just it would take me however long you've been playing strats, to spend that time with strats. Yeah, and learning like, to internet. You that. know, cookie cut that analogy to anyone with any any particular guitar they've spent a long time exactly, playing. Exactly, exactly. I think that's one of the reasons I struggle with my um, shorter scale guitars. Right. It takes me a minute just to just yeah. to lock in because I'm so used to playing 25 and a half. Anyway, we could talk about this all day. Indeed, probably have. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, um, if that wasn't too painful, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Uh, a massive thank you to anyone that's gone to that pedalshowstore.com and grabbed some merch, strings and hats and t-shirts and all the great stuff. Indeed. Um, also, please go to that uh, No. Also, please go to that pedalshop.com where you could probably buy all manner of guitar tuners. Indeed. Um, if you're in the USA, that is. Um, yeah, we sell pedals and stuff there and amps and some other stuff. So yes. please go to that pedalshop.com. A massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you, Patri patrons. You will be getting podcasts of our episodes and VCQs and also go into uh, current patrons at a certain date. We'll go into a monthly draw to win something cool. Uh, yes. Very cool. It's a giveaway. Indeed. Brilliant. Uh, fantastic. Thank you so much. All. Oh. Also, a massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey. And in Australia... Would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane in Queensland. Fantastic. And please join us on Monday for viewers' comments and questions where we can hear all about your experiences with uh, tuning and yes, what works for you. You can kick us down the street until it hurts. Indeed. Looking forward to that one. Thanks so much. Hurts. Get it? <laughs> Very good. Very good. Cheers, everyone. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye. Bye.